Hi, and uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Might just tip that a little bit that way. Um, I thought I'd share with you today um, uh, something that I found in my bookshelf uh, just down down the bottom down there. <laughs> um, going through the other day, I'm trying to get rid of things and, and uh, sorting through things and picking out books that I've got more than one copy of so I can donate them somewhere else. But I came across this um, set of a couple of books which I bought some years ago in a second hand shop or an antique shop in a country town in South Australia. And um, they are fascinating books and I'm going to talk a little bit about them. Uh, have you ever heard that term where someone is said to be in good stead? Well, I looked up what that means and I don't know that the definitions they give on the, the internet are exactly what it means because I like to think that it comes from the man who founded these books, who started off these books called The Review of Reviews. I don't know whether you've ever heard of these before, but these are nice thick, thick volumes. I think I might have paid about $50 each for these in this antique shop because I looked at them and I was enthralled. This is The Review of Reviews, which is an, an illustrated version. This is the... Um, where are we? What sort of pictures have we got in there? This is the illustrated version, which um, has got photographs. And there you go. There's a good starting one for this one, The Progress of the World. And this was um, volume five, number 25, January 1892. And the price was sixpence. The Review of Reviews. So that was a, an international version one or a British one. And this was uh, these were done by W.T. Stead. And this one is the Australian version. So there's lots of good Australian content in there as well. And these were produced for some years. I'm just going to read a little bit off of the um, uh, internet here, if I can find it for you. Just bear with me while I just shift that so I can use my mouse. Um, this is off of Wikipedia about Mr. Stead, a very interesting man. So um, William Thomas Stead was born the 5th of July, 1849, and he died on the 15th of April, 1912. He actually was on the Titanic when it sank. And so that was the end of Mr. Stead. And um, he was an amazing uh, person. He was, I'll just read about what it says here. Uh, William Thomas Stead was a British newspaper editor who as a pioneer of, invest, who, who as a pioneer of investigative journalism became a controversial figure of the Victorian era. Stead published a series of hugely influential campaigns uh, whilst editor of the Paul Mall Gazette, including his 1885 series of articles, The Maiden Tribute of Modern Babylon. These were written in support of a bill later dubbed the Stead Act that raised the age of consent from 13 to 16. Stead's new journalism paved the way for the modern tabloid in Great Britain. He has been described as the most famous journalist in the British Empire, and he is considered to have influenced how the press could be used to influence public opinion and government policy and advocated government by journalism. He was known for his reportage on child welfare, social legislation and reformation of England's criminal codes. And it says here he died in the sinking of the Titanic. And uh, these are fascinating books. And um, I have written about them before on my blog. I'll try and find a link to that and put that underneath here. In fact, on the blog, there's a fascinating one. He, he, he's got articles and the short stories, all sorts of things in, in here. But there's an article here um, which he talks about, which I'll read a little bit of it. Um, and he's talking about Hans Christian Andersen. And uh, it's a fascinating story. Um, I'll just read a little bit about it. Um, in the Century magazine for March, Century was another magazine that was popular around the time, H. H. Boyerson contributes an interesting account of some conversations which he had with Hans Christian Andersen in 1873. At that time, Boyerson was staying with a friend of Andersen's who was ill, and Andersen used to come to the house to see the invalid. Boyerson made his acquaintance and subsequently met him uh, repeatedly. The following is his description of Anderson as he found him. Hans Christian Andersen, of course, was the famous author of children's fairy tales, uh, including The Ugly Duckling and lots of others. This is the first impression by this H.H. H. Boyenson as he met Hans Christian Andersen. I found him as at our first meeting, 
lying on the sofa wrapped in a dressing gown. He was pale and emaciated, but his face seemed ennobled by suffering and had lost the plebeian look, which is characteristic of all the portraits taken during the earlier periods of his life. The large receding forehead, which was gracious and of good proportion, was the only feature which gave any indication of intellect. Of course, they based intellect and, and your brain power on how you looked in those days. The nose, mouth and chin were rudely modelled, almost ugly. The greyish blue eyes were full of kindness, but they were small and he could never have and could never have been luminous. The whole figure was loose jointed and angular and the arms and legs seemed too long in proportion to the trunk. The storyteller and the naturalist, they had a good deal of talk in the course of which Darwin's name was mentioned. There you are, there's another famous name. Anderson regarded Darwin as an absurd and insignificant crank. And when Boyerson spoke of him with respect as the greatest naturalist of the age, this is what Hans Christian Anderson said, me being a creationist rather than evolutionist, I'm with Hans Christian Anderson, but you might want to differ on that. This is what he said. Um, Oh, it is very sad, he said, with a naivety which laid bare his simple childlike soul, that men cannot be satisfied with what God has taught them, but must question his word as if they knew better than he. Useful inventions which make life, e life easier and happier, those I approve of with all my heart. And to them the scientists ought to confine their labours. But when they come to me and want to deprive me of my faith in God, and his word, then I say to them, excuse me, gentlemen, I know as much about this as you do and cannot accept you as guides. There you are. So tantalizing little glimpses, all sorts of um, wonderful interviews and stories and uh, um, events reported, photographs, drawings, whatever in these books. If you can get hold of some copies of these, I'd suggest you look around and see what you can find. The review of reviews um, and even Yesterday, I was looking at the Australian version of one and I mentioned some uh, and they have ads for medicines and things in the old days. Incidentally, I've got a, a book here called Kitchen Physic, which I'm selling at the moment, which is all the old wives tales from 1900 of how to cure just about everything. But in this um, Australian version of this book, there's a, a testimony by some guy who had some cure by some person. He was on a station somewhere near Horsham in Victoria. And I looked up the name of it and the station homestead is still there. So they're a historical um, gold mine, these books. And uh, what I like about going through old books like this is that when you um, uh, get on the internet and look at some of these things and say, oh, just Google that, it's amazing what you come up with. So, and you can find, if you Google um, this, the, the, the um, review of reviews and that other uh, book that I mentioned before, what was that one called? Uh, I can't remember what it was. I read it out there before. The Paul Mall Gazette. And there was another one too uh, that I, I read out, I think, as well. But you can find that, you know, there's people who have, have, have um, actually recorded texts from a lot of these things. So do let your fingers do the, the walking and, and have a good look around. So there you go. Um, so the review of reviews by William T. Stead. And I hope... Um, your life is in good stead at the moment <laughs> and you are sorry you are in good stead in other words your reputation is is um, in good regard with other people around the place if you're in good stead so there you are the founder of modern investigative journalism you didn't know that did you maybe you did if you're a journalist but anyway thanks for watching like if you like subscribe if you wish and I'll see you next time we're now going to leave the meeting I can find where I do it here we go down here somewhere. My mouse is working. Leave.